Hey guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel. I'm so upset today because I feel like today would be the day, if any, to wear like one of those really cute crew necks that are like throne of glass. I really want one of those that says Terrison across the top. You guys know any cute shops that you get cute crew necks at that are bookish related? Let me know down below. Today's video arguably took me like three years to research for. Today we are going to be tier ranking all of Sarah J Mass's books, all of them, ever. I wanted to wait to do this until after I finished House of Flame and Shadow. I finished it in a vlog that I did. I will leave that link down below if you guys haven't seen it yet, but basically I read all of Crescent City, all three of them for the first time. Even after reading that series, I still had one more Sarah J Mass book to read that I'd never read before, which was Assassin's Blade. If you guys follow me on Bookstagram, you know that I never read Assassin's Blade. Simply put, I just forgot where it went in the series, and then I was reading Queen of Shadows, and I was like, Oh, it was supposed to go there. Now, finally, as of a couple days ago, I'm completely caught up in the mass first. I have some takes that are weird to some people. I have some takes that are extremely basic, but I feel like everybody has a different order that they rank all of the Sarah J. Mass books from Throne of Glass, Akatar, and Crescent City. So today we're gonna find out how similar you and I are. I need to figure out how to screen record on this. I have my iPad with me. I made a tier list today. This is actually my first ever tier ranking list I've ever made. I still feel like I did it wrong. I feel like there's some sort of app to make it easier, but I feel like this took me a lot longer than it should have. So the bottom category is really just for a very specific type of book. It's called Cute But Unnecessary. I'm not going to get into this one too much because you guys will understand what I mean whenever I start putting these in this category. The next category up is That's a Book for Sure. This one is specifically for books that I just did not enjoy and like while I was reading it, I like wasn't having that great of a time. I actually don't even know which ones I'm specifically going to put into this category. Now that I'm thinking about it, I'm like, I feel like I enjoyed my time with all of them in different ways. But this is going to be for my least favorite books. The next category up is Had a Good Time, But I Would Make Some Changes. This is for the books that, like, they're definitely not perfect. Like, they have so many flaws. I would definitely make some changes, but did I have a good time? Yes, I did. The next category up is Perfect But Not Life Changing. I feel like a lot of these fall in this category. Nothing was wrong with it. It was absolutely perfect. It was so much fun to read i loved every part of it but like it didn't for some reason emotionally change me or like wreck my life i just read it and i was like this is perfect and i probably gave it a five star and i moved on with my life and then this final category at the very top is this changed me on a fundamental level this category is specifically reserved for those five star books but they're more than five stars like if i could give it six stars i would this changed the way that i look at the world this changed me as a person i couldn't stop thinking about this book for a very very long time i constantly was playing playlists on spotify that had to do with this book and I cried about it multiple times after I finished it. That is what this category is for. So starting from the bottom, we're just going to jump into it. The bottom category, cute but unnecessary. The first book that's got to go in here is A Court of Frost and Starlight. Here's the thing about A Court of Frost and Starlight. I enjoyed it. It was cute, but I feel like it could have easily gone into A Court of Silver Flames. To me, there was just no reason for that to be a whole novella. Like to me, I think that the end part with Nesta and Cassian, central parts that were gonna be in A Court of Silver Flames, could have easily been like a little prologue. Was it cute? Sure, but it was literally the lowest I think I've rated any Sarah J Mass book. It just wasn't necessary to me. The next one in this category, I think a lot of people are gonna get mad about because I, maybe I just hate novellas, but I'm putting assassin's blade in this category as well i read assassin's blade just recently i actually really enjoyed it i gave it a four stars my problem with it is that these five little novellas in this novella could have easily been put into queen of shadows air of fire like they could have been placed in multiple different books they really weren't necessary to be put in a whole separate book i feel like books like this just give me money grab vibes there's so much confusion around like should i read assassin's blade first should i read it in the middle i would recommend reading it in the middle but i don't think it should have to be placed in the middle and the reason that i forgot about it is because i'm like i'm already so invested in this storyline with aelin and rowan and i'm like so into it with the characters this is the honest truth i did forget where it went but I also wasn't in any hurry to remember where it went in the series because I was so in the mindset of like, okay, Aelin, Rowan, her adventure that she's on right now. I didn't want to get out of that and like go read like a random prequel. And I still feel that way, even though it's essential information. I'm like, I wouldn't have wanted to take a break from this story that I was in and like hear her prequel to what happens in the book. I guess that's personal preference. I personally didn't think it was that necessary. Anyways, if I talk about all these this much, like this is gonna be such a long video, so I'm gonna try to not 
not talk that much about all these. Moving on to the next category, that's a book for sure. I think I'm gonna have to put, uh, this is so sad, but I think I'm gonna have to put Throne of Glass in here. Started Throne of Glass and I read the first book. I think I actually gave it like a four stars, like 3.75. To me though, it was like not her best. I felt like there was a lot of problems with it and I honestly didn't like it that much, especially with the development of Kale. I didn't like Kale from the beginning. Like even before I knew what was gonna happen later on, I was like, Mm, like I just don't like him and to me I was like when the option is Dorian like how the heck are we choosing Kale? I just didn't really like Throne of Glass that much and I just felt like it was probably one of the worst written but the girl was like 16 17 so I, who am I to judge? The next one in this category has to be A Court of Thorns and Roses. Actually I think this is the last one. I actually probably enjoyed it more than I think most people did. I wasn't really that bored. I just felt like there was a lot of like just cheesy corny things in this book, which is fine. It was also just the weakest in the series to me. I actually did have a good time reading it, but I feel like there's too many things I would change about it to put it in the next category up. I might change my mind when I do a reread, but whenever I'm thinking about it right now, I just like want to giggle because I just think it's like so goofy. So many parts like the riddle and the answer is love. Like, you know, all that stuff. I'm just like, okay, it just, it just seems so goofy now looking back on it. And even with Tamlin, I was never really feeling Tamlin. Even whenever I was reading Quarter Thorns and Roses, I was kind of like, mm, it's been a really long time since I've read this book. So maybe I'd reread it and be like, okay, this is more of a fun time than I thought. But in my head, as I'm remembering this, I'm like, I, I don't think I liked it that much. I think I almost didn't continue the series until people really convinced me to because I didn't like A Quarter Thorns and Roses. So now we're getting into the categories where like, I do love all of these, but some of them are worse than others. Okay, starting off strong, we have Crown of Midnight. Really actually didn't like most of Crown of Midnight until we got to the end, which is why I'm putting it in this category because the ending to me was so good. Before we got to the ending, I would have put it in the that's a book for sure category because I really did not vibe with the first part of this book. Again, with all the chaos nonsense, I was so confused though because I was like, girl, Dorian is an option. Why are we going for chaos? Like Dorian is right in front of you. Especially now that I read Assassin's Blade, I'm like, girl, like what was she doing? Anyways, yeah, Crown of Midnight, uh, not for me. But at the end of it, I really did have a good time. So many important things happened in it and leading into Era of Fire, it was a really important book. I ended up, I think, giving it maybe like a 4.25. It literally just like dangles in the in-between between that's a book for sure and had a good time but would make some changes. It's hard to pick, but I think I'm gonna leave it in this category. <laughs> this is a, ha a K-all hate account, but like I just really prefer when he's not even in it. Especially not when like I know that this is like Aelin freaking Galathinius. Like what are you doing? Like what are you doing? Especially because right before this was Sam. I'm like, girl, I don't know. There's things I would change, aka I would change her ever being in a relationship with K Anyways, people are really gonna hate me for this, but I have to do what I have to do. I'm gonna put a Court of Silver Flames in here. And the reason why is because I feel like relationship-wise, a Court of Silver Flames was phenomenal. But plot-wise, there were so many plot holes and there were so many things happening at the end of this book. Like whenever I was on the last 200 pages, I always expect that it's going to be kind of crazy because it's a Sarah J Maas book. But whenever I was reading the end of this, I like had whiplash. I was like, what is happening? None of this makes sense. This is all just like to solve the problems and like solve the plot that's for some reason happening right now. But I had such a good time reading this book. Like I loved Nesta and Cassian. I love this book. Anytime that people are like, oh, I read the first like three, but I don't know if I'm going to read the next two and A Quarter of Thrones Roses, I'm like, you better read it because it's so freaking good. And I gave it a 4.5. Like literally I loved this book, but the plot holds, like I have to put it in this category because it's definitely not perfect, but I had a really good time. So this is way higher than Crowd of Midnight, like way, way higher, liked it way more. I just need that to be known. So we have two Crescent City books that are falling in this category for me. First is House of Sky and Breath. People are literally going to come for my throat for this, but in my personal humble opinion, I just think that there was so way too many things happening in this book. I loved the characters more in this book than I did in House of Earth and Blood, but I feel like it was just too many POVs. Like, I feel like there was a lot of things that like didn't really make sense for the characters. But they were just kind of happening for the plot. A big example of this was the relationship with Hunt and Bryce. Like in this book, I'm like, especially at the beginning, they were like, oh, we're celibate, but it's really just because we're, I don't even know. There was no real re reason for it except for making more tension. I just don't like whenever she puts things in, like just for the heck of it. 
like I want there to be a reason for most things if I'm gonna call a book perfect but I just feel like there were too many times that I was either bored or just like frustrated because of things that were happening with the plot that weren't really necessary I did love the ending and I loved so many parts about this book I had such a good time in certain parts of this book but I just feel like most of the Crescent Cities like this especially the second and the third I'm like there's just so much of this book like it could be cut into like 600 pages but I just feel like they're too long it would probably be a perfect book if you shortened it that much honestly like who am i to judge okay the last book in this category is house of flame and shadow the thing about house of flame and shadow i gave it a four stars i did really enjoy it i thought it was great i think i probably liked it more than a lot of people liked it because i read it right after i read house of sky and breath and house of earth and blood so i read it right in a row so i think that i liked it more than people who waited a long time or were expecting a lot from it at the same time there was just too much happening there were too many like loose ends that didn't get tied or loose ends that just got tied like really quickly. It wasn't something that was like very meaningful. It was trying too hard to be thrown of glass. Obviously, I'm not gonna give any spoilers in this part. I do feel like the crossover was done well. I just felt like there were so many parts of this book that just didn't stay true to character. Like we knew them the whole time. Whenever I started Crescent City, I was so confident that this was gonna be, maybe not better than Throne of Glass, but I was like, this is gonna be one of my favorite Sarah J Mass series because I'm like, there's so much potential here. The world is so unique, etc. But then by the end, I was like, this just feels like it's it's like a modern world trying to be thrown of class. So now it's like my least favorite series, but it's disappointing because in the beginning I was so excited and hopeful that this was going to be one of my favorites. I think House of Flame and Shadow kind of just sums that all up. It's like Bryce was so different from how her character was in the beginning. Their relationship was really different. I just feel like if I was going to make some changes, what I would do is make it 10 million times more emotional because I was like barely crying by that one. If you guys go watch my Crescent City vlog, all of the first book, I was sobbing my eyes out. Part of the second book I was, and then by the third book, I was like, I don't know. It just didn't get me emotionally and there's just a lot of things I would change about it. So anyways, that's probably the longest explanation I'm going to give. I'm going to kind of do this next category, perfect but not life-changing, in the order of which I liked these books. So I'm going to start with least and go to most. I do think that all these books are perfect, but there's like an order of which I enjoyed them and I still think they're perfect, if that makes sense. Okay, starting off with the least favorite. I'm going to do Air of Fire. I did really love Air of Fire, but I didn't like really really love it until the very end of it whenever all the things were happening kind of like the battle scene and like Aelin kind of coming into herself and her and Rowan's relationship developing like I feel like it was at the very end whenever I was like oh okay like this is the direction we're going with Throne of Glass. I feel like I like it the least because other ones on this list like the whole time I was hooked and I was just so in the story and I couldn't put it down and I was like obsessed with it so that was probably like the my least favorite on this list. The next one on here, I'll do Empire of Storms next. Empire of Storms, I loved so much of this book. I did a tandem read with Tower of Dawn with Empire of Storms. I thought that this was a perfect book. I thought there were so many POVs that I was so happy to read. I was so into this story. I was obsessed with everything happening. I was on my toes. This is the difference between Throne of Glass and Crescent City. During Throne of Glass, like every single POV to me was important and like personal to me. I was like so excited for each one when it was Lorcan, when it was a lead, like every single one I was so into. So I do think this is a perfect book. Oh, man, I don't know. Oh, I don't know. Okay, you know what? Before that, I'm gonna put Tower of Dawn. It's really hard for me to differentiate the two because I did read them at the same time as one book, but I think that Tower of Dawn, oh, I just love both. Oh my God, I love Tower of Dawn. And you guys know from the, literally the beginning of this video, like I'm a Kale hater, but I loved Tower of Dawn. It was such a good book. The character development was amazing. But again, these, all these three are such good, perfect books in my head. It's just a matter of which ones I like better. And I think my list would probably have to be Air of Fire, Tower of Dawn, Empire of Storms as the one that I like the best. I did get emotional with these. I did really enjoy these. They were some of my favorites, but they didn't like change me on a fundamental level. And then the last book in this category is going to be A Court of Wings and Ruin. I love A Court of Wings and Ruin. This one is my favorite out of all these four that are on this list. I had a great time reading it. I think it's perfect, but... It just, like, that. I'm just, honestly, there really is a line between these four and the next four. They just don't hit that next emotionally, like, obsessive level for me. But in A Court of Wings and Ruin, I really do love the relationship between all the characters and, like, seeing everything come together. Cassie and Nesta's relationship beginning to, like, start to bloom. Oh, I just, I really, really do love A Court of Wings and Ruin. It's just 
like not at that next level up for me. Oh, it's gonna be so hard to rank these, but these are my four that change me on a fundamental level. So hard to rank, but I am gonna rank them from least favorite to favorite. I think the first one on this list is gonna be House of Earth and Blood. Oh my God. I love House of Earth and Blood, but I feel like this is such a hot take because so many people like House of Sky and Breath so much better than House of Earth and Blood, but House of Earth and Blood absolutely changed me on a fundamental level. I sobbed my eyes out. I related so hard to Bryce. I loved the character development. I loved her relationship with him. Like everything about, oh my God, the ending. And ugh. like this is, to, in my mind, House of Earth and Blood is like a million times better than either two of the other Crescent Cities. That book has such a special place in my heart. I will think about this for the rest of my life. I I just love it. And the premise of this book was so unique. That's why I was so excited for the rest of the series because I was like, this book is so good. It's like hard to rank these because it's like ranking my children. <laughs> this is another really hot take. But I think I'm gonna have to, uh, I think I'm, mm, I think I'm gonna have to put Kingdom of Ash next. And hear me out when I say this, love Kingdom of Ash so much, like so much. It physically hurts me to even rank this third. I think that I like, Queen of Shadows better only because there was like less stakes like there still was high stakes but it wasn't as high we didn't lose as many people I didn't like I feel like in Queen of Shadows I was more so like crying because I was so proud to be following Aelin whereas in Kingdom of Ash I was crying like because I was hysterical about like all the people we were losing I love getting to see more of Manon in Kingdom of Ash I just feel like Queen of Shadows I feel like I liked it more because the stakes were weren't as high and I got to just enjoy it rather than just like being in distress the whole time I was reading Queen Kingdom of Ash. With that being said, next on the list, number two is A Court of Mist and Fury. I feel like I am just like every other girl when I say this, but this is one of the best romance books I've ever read in my life. I feel like when I read A Court of Mist and Fury, I was a changed woman. I listened to Spotify playlists like based off of A Court of Mist and Fury for weeks and I would get emotional every time I would pull up the app. I would like pull up the Spotify app and I would start crying because I would be thinking about Feyre and Reese. I think also like even though what I like to be Aelin, 100%. If I could pick which of the female main characters I was the most like, I would probably pick Aelin if I could. Like if I could be any of them, I would want to be Aelin. But I'm just such a favorite to my core and I felt so seen whenever I read that book. I just love A Court of Mr. Fury so much. I have to put it second. Last, takes the cake, top of the line, absolute favorite book written by Miss Sarah Janet Mass, Queen of Mofo Shadows. I love this book to my core. If I'm asked like my favorite books of all time, like Queen of Shadows is making the list. I love Queen of Shadows so much. I feel like I love a good like development. I love a good come up and I feel like getting to see Dorian and Aelin, oh, I'm gonna cry literally thinking about this. Like getting to see Dorian and Aelin like come to themselves finally after so long. Oh my God, it's getting to see Manon. Like Manon was so much better in this one than she was in Air of Fire. Like I am a Queen of Shadows stan. Oh my gosh, when Adian comes to the picture, I just love this book so much. This book has such a special place in my heart. I always think about this book. It's just my favorite. I wish that all of her books were like Queen of Shadows. If they were, I would, I mean, I already am. I feel like a diehard stand if I'm making this video, but I feel like I would like actually like ride or die, like we ride at dawn for Sarah J Maas. Like I would do that if all of her books were like Queen of Shadows. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Let me know your ranking. Let me know which of these books you agree with, which rankings you disagree with, all that stuff. Also, please, I'm not joking you. Please tell me where to get a crew neck with Sarah J Maas. Anything from A Quarter of Thorns and Roses, Crescent City, anything. Like I really want more recommendations because I want to start wearing more bookish shirts whenever I'm filming these videos. Anyways, thank you guys for watching and happy Valentine's Day. I think I'm going to be posting this tomorrow. So I hope you guys have a great Valentine's Day. Bye.